Alrighty, fam, we're going to transition into our Bible study. And so let us pray. Father, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. We appreciate so much the testimonies that we have heard and the encouraging ways uh, in which you are working. Father, Lord, it reminds us indeed that the battle is not ours, and we must also stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. We pray it indeed that we can be part of what you are doing. Tonight, give us wisdom as we uh, peel back the scriptures in the book of Revelation. We pray for direction, and we ask, O oh Lord, always that your spirit may impress us with something that we can use in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And amen. So, we had a break. Uh, we had 10 days of prayer. And so we are going to be picking back up. Last time we left off with the book of Revelation chapter 13. We started on the first part. Uh, we looked at the first beast, if you will recall, Revelation 13, 1 through 10. We looked at the beast from the sea. Tonight we are going to be covering the second part, the beast from the earth. So we want to recap, then we're going to actually read the scriptures. So I'd like somebody to begin turning to Revelation 13, and we'll read 11 through 17. But first, let's do a quick recap. Um, so again, if you remember, the first beast here, there are two beasts that are listed, but then we had, it was divided into two sections. Section one, verses one through four, was dealing with the description of the beast, and then what were its actions, verses five through 10. And we'll see a similar thing when we look at this one also so these were the description we had 10 descriptive dif descriptive points regarding the first beast it rose up out of the sea we talk about sea being what multitude towns people etc then it received its power or seed authority from the devil from the dragon satan so therefore this is uh, demonic activity as well is not uh, from god or of god it becomes a worldwide power and not just in one locale, but it had power all around the world. It is guilty of blasphemy. It rules for 42 prophetic months. We've seen that over and over in the book of Revelation, 1,260 years. Um, it receives a deadly wound that heals. It is a religious power that receives worship and has persecuted God's saints. We talked about that in different chapters of Revelation as well. And it has a mysterious number 666. That's what we concluded with on the last time. And it is led by one supreme person as the head. And so we looked at that again. These descriptions continue to be all over again in Revelation, Revelation 42 months, three and a half years, 1260 years, etc. So we look at that from 538 AD. Only one power was ruling at this time, the papal power. And then that rule abolished or ended in 1798 with a deadly wound from Berthier. So now let's look at Revelation chapter 13, verses 11 through 17. So we are going to read the passage first. So if someone would like to read it for us, and then we will go through and see what we can extract from it. So let's see if we put this up on the screen here in a second. But if you already have it. I have, have it. Yeah, I have ahead. it. Clear word, I can read it if you want. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Okay, the beast from the land. Verse 11, then I saw a large animal come out of the earth. It had two little horns, like a harmless ham. lamb. Sorry, listen to me. But it developed the power and spirit of the dragon and began to speak and act like one. This land animal began to listen to the sea beast. It decided to exercise its authority on behalf of the sea beast and to make everyone in the world worship the beast whose fatal wound had been healed. The dragon used this animal as a false prophet to perform incredible miracles, such as bringing down fire from heaven for all to see. Then the land animal deceived people with false prophecies and with the miracles it could do with the dragon's help. It told the inhabitants of the earth to honor the beast that had been wounded by the sword, but did not die. The animal threatened with death anyone who would not honor and worship the beast. It forced everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to accept the mark of the sea beast on their right hand or on their forehead. After this, 
no one could buy or sell unless he honored the sea beast by having its mark, which has its name and number. This calls for more than human wisdom, but with spiritual insight, anyone can calculate its name and number, which is 666. It's a name and number made by man. Awesome. Thank you, Sister Kennedy, for that. So again, that gives us the overall depiction there. Now, again, we're doing 1 through 17 because we did 18 um, on last week. So let's look at it, shall we? Let's see what we can get out of here. And again, if you have any points that you would like to share, of course, you can let us know and you can comment as well. So let's bring back up our slide. So the description here, we take it verse by verse, right? So then I saw another beast, which is what? Another makes sense, right? Because we already had one. So this is the second one, not the same one, the second one. This time, the first one came up. So we have a, this uh, two different things here. This one, the first one came up out of it on the waters in a large populated place. Now we see this one coming up from a different location. It said it came up out of the earth. And what's the description? Like we did the description of the first one. It said this one had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. So that's the uh, first identification that we have for this here. Now, interestingly, again, if we, if you are new here, we've done a lot of backtrack on these before, right? We've studied the whole entire book of Daniel before, and then we are on 13. So that means we've studied quite a bit here. But when we plug in the prophetic keys, when we look at Daniel chapter 7 and other places, we find what? In Bible prophecy, apocalyptic prophecy specifically, a beast represent what? A government, a, a, a king, a nation, etc. So, so he's not seeing an I like. So we're not saying this is a, a just a beast like what is shown here in the picture. It represents. So he saw a nation coming up out of the earth. Now, what would the earth mean? Because an animal is not just going to rise up out of the ground, right? So what we are saying here is just like we use the prophetic code when it says the first one was out of the water that's where it came up from therefore and the waters the scriptures gave us that the waters meant this particular thing so therefore now this is representing not coming up out of many peoples and so forth and whatnot this come up comes up on a separate thing so this is in a what they say is an area that is not so populated now Two other descriptions. We have two horns and he spoke like a lamb. And this is important, right? So, right, some of you who are good at English, like is not saying that it is necessarily, right? So it is like a lamb. It is not a lamb. And it is speaking like a dragon. So we see two different things here. We know the characteristics of what a lamb should be, but then we also know what the characteristics of a dragon. So this right here tells me that this is a deceptive power right off the bat. Because on one hand, it is lamb-like in, in what it does uh, or what it says, but in this actions, it's also showing or saying something else that is totally opposite to being a lamb. All right. So when we look at some historical information here, the papacy, again, um, this is mentioned in verse 10. This took place in 1798. So therefore, now after that power went off the scene, a new power was seen emerging at the same time. We believe, and Adventists teach and espouse, that this is the United States. Okay, The U.S. declared independence in 1776, voted its constitution in 87, adopted the Bill of Rights in 91, and was clearly recognized as a war power by 1798. So the timing, therefore, seems to fit the United States of America. Now, horns, what does horns represent? Horns represent kings or kingdoms or governments. We can look at the code right there, Daniel 7, 24, Daniel 8, 21. So in this case now, what do they represent pertaining to the United States? These are the governing principles, the two horns, we believe represent civil and religious freedom, right? So we see those element combined. So these two principles, have been labeled as what some call republicanism, which is a government without a king. Hence, we see that it doesn't um, notice what's on its head. Unlike the other beasts that had these crowns, this one has something else. So the two things here that are uh, uh, working uh, similarly together is 
right? We have governmental power and then we have a church power here, Protestantism, right? Because that's why most people from Europe came to the United States in the early days, as they say, was to seek religious freedom or fleeing persecution uh, from Europe. And they came over here to have religious freedoms. So again, crowns also indicates what? Kingly authority, but here, the beasts don't have these, so therefore this indicates freedom, right? The absence of crown, the absence of kingship, the absence of that type of rulership. So the rulership in the United States was based on something different than a monarch, as, we, as was found in Europe during this time. This makes sense, okay? So how, do, how does a nation speak? And how does a nation speak? If a nation, if we say a nation speak, how the picture here gives us an example, right? So somebody talks to me. How does a nation speak? How would we say a nation is speaking? Through its, through its government. Yeah. Through its government, through and its uh, government are there to enact mm -hmm. laws. They're primarily through the leader of the country. So there we go. And so as we see here, when the nation puts anything into law it has spoken it says this is what we will do and this is what we will not do and this is what will happen if you go against what we say to do or not to do right so it's talking and so the same thing right with if you think about you know even with kids right when you give them rules or guidelines we are saying this is my rule for my house now, you can go against it if you want to, but there are consequences to the same. Isn't it the same with God? When God came down on the mountain, he spoke to them, right? Uh, mm -hmm. He spoke to them, but he spoke primarily through his laws. He said, these are my laws, and these are the things that we will do in our relationship or covenant together. So Satan aimed always to use up God's throne authority to force people to worship and obey him. So speaking as a dragon then can mean that the United States, under the influence of Satan, remember, it gets its power from the same place as the first beast. So in the end of time, it will force people to worship contrary to conscience or be punished. Let's look at how that's going to play out. Now, this right here is where, again, sometimes we go into cognitive dissonance. Part of it is, okay, again, one of the things I say is, we rail a lot about the first beast, right? We preach heavily on that, but we seem to minimize this aspect. Now, if our teaching be true, we need to be balanced and we need to give just attention to both. Matter of fact, for me personally, I believe this one is most dangerous. Why? Because the first beast cannot do anything without the second. And it says it is the second beast that will cause the entire world to worship the first. So therefore, this one to me is even more draconian in this season than the first one, because again, the first one cannot accomplish what it needs to accomplish without this one. And so it is tough. And I understand sometimes again, because this is where most of us are. So therefore, we are maybe uh, reticent to say what is it is. But again, you can not keep cherry picking. <laughs> if you're going to say this is that with vehement um, um, appeals, we should do the same for this as well, right? But always in a loving way, I believe. So now, well, what specifically, <laughs> talk to me, somebody was saying? No, I was going to say it makes sense because if you believe the Lamb is the United States, the United States is the, you know, strongest military in the world. It actually has military force. And then with the beast that has got, um, it got hit by the sword, so it's weakened. And, um, you know, the papacy in the Catholic Church and things like that, they lost their force. They don't have an army. So it makes sense for the second beast coming out of the earth to have the force itself to actually execute like what the uh, beast from the sea actually wants to do. Very good point, Josh. Very, very good point and observation there. A little good, actually, way to explain it. Most people don't um, put it like that. Because yeah, like so. um, through what he said, I could hear that it's a deadly force. Mm -hmm. United, they're a deadly force. They yeah. Get together. 
And you, you need a lot of power to be able to do this type of stuff because we're talking about worldwide. And one of the things, too, again, if you, you know, sometime again, with, like I said, with church, there's so many things you got to present, right, and teach. But if you will be, you know, pay attention to some of the sequences in, in how we present some of our series, right? So we've spoken at length. We've done probably at minimum of four sermons, but between four to six sermons, we did about worship, right? The key thing in the end of time is worship. And I know, yes, we focus on so many other outlying things, but the, the point is, it is about worship. It comes down to who are you going to worship? Will you worship God? Will you worship the enemy? Will you worship Satan? And that is also crucial because no matter how you slice it, it's between God and the devil, right? No matter how you slice it. And that's some of the things where, again, sometimes we can get so... Um, in this battle as it were even within like you know yeah listen reality is if people still don't even get it between who the beast is and all of that the point is people understand good and evil for the most part people understand that they're god and the devil so because think about it this doesn't it say that the beast received its power from the dragon so the dragon is behind it all so if we can identify the devil and if we can identify evil, we need the Holy Spirit too, because some, some of us, especially in this day, you know, we are the generation that calls good evil and evil good. So, so, you know, but generally, if you are aware of that, then you should be able to make a decision. So there is no this or that. There's only God and there's the devil. So we can't choose to be neutral. We can't say, well, I'm not picking a side. Actually, that's what the devil likes too. Not picking a side, you have pick a side, right? There's no in between. So good point there again, Josh. Um, let's see here. So now we want to talk about now how specifically then does this beast, the United States, speak as a dragon? So notice it's not saying it is the dragon because the dragon is the dragon, right? And just like it's not saying it is a lamb, it is lamb-like, but it's not a lamb. But the tendencies are dragonic in the way it's executed or speaking. So now let's look at it. Let's look at some of the ways. Now, it says he exercised all the power and authority of the first beast in his presence. So what does that tell us? It is even, it is, it has its own power that's been given to it, but it also exercised the same powers too that the first beast has. So that makes sense too when we consider what Josh just mentioned, right? So is it doing a different work than the, than the previous beast? No, it's not. It's doing the same thing and more. The same thing and more. So that's one of the things. He exercises all the authority. So remember all the things we've spoken about, the dark ages, middle ages, all these things that we have looked at under the seven seals, etc., cetera, uh, under the trumpets, etc. When we look at the seven churches, all of these, they are, they are repeated, right? They are the same time periods. And on the, each of these, right, we, are begin, we saw how the, the, the church persecuted people in the name of God, killed so many people in the name of God, corrupted the gospel in such a way that people really lost sight of God, salvation, etc. So if that be the case, we are seeing history. Solomon says there's nothing new under the sun. History always, they say, repeats itself. So what else does he do? He causes the earth, meaning the inhabitants of the earth, because now it says those who dwell in it. And what 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 is it doing? He causes them to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And we've already identified that as a papacy. So therefore, it is the job of this nation, <laughs> prophetically speaking, to cause everybody to end up worshiping the first beast. Hard to pill to swallow, like. but reality. How would it, yeah, I mean, how do you imagine that will look like? I mean, I try to imagine um, yes, America we're gonna just look. saying to every family, you know, like getting on the news and saying every single family starting from such and such a date or whatever, yes. you know needs to be worshiping you know and, and i know there'd be a lot of rejection by people because there gonna be people saying you can't force us to you know how america is already right right of course of but course, i'm just please. wondering what that would truthfully look like 
And praise God for for even some of that too, right? Because, but here's the thing. Yes, so you're right. This is why, again, we if we we don't know how everything will pan out. But again, if we believe the prophecies of the past and we believe that all these things have met their fulfillment before, then this too shall come to pass, right? So, and not only that, but remember, worship is subtle. Worship does not mean people are falling down on their knees. You are not going to get more secularists to worship God you're not going to get most atheists to worship no God. You're not. But remember, we all worship. But everybody don't have to be worshiping God, isn't it so? Because if you are worshiping trees, are uh, you not worshiping? You're just not worshiping God. And remember, it's two forces. Satan will take worship anyway. If you're worshiping money, you are worshiping. So the secularists, the, as long as they're not worshiping God, that's what the enemy wants. Because everyone worships. And we've spoken on what worship looks like. Worship, again, is not simply opening the Bible or even singing <clears throat> hymns and so forth, right? Worship, we talk about at least 12 different ways worship manifests itself in the scripture. So our whole life is actually an act of worship. So if my allegiance is not to God, my allegiance is a, as a businessman, the secularist, that's what he worships, right? The, the person who is a, a Wicca, that's what they're worshiping. Right? The person who is, um, again, the, even the atheist, he worships himself. He does not believe in any God. So therefore, again, remember, if you are not on the side of God, you are already on the side of the devil. Because part of the devil's plan, as we find in Matthew chapter 24, Luke 21, and in, in Revelation, we have a verse coming up. It says, he deceives the world. So part of it is what? Deception. As Jesus even said, some even in the church who think they're worshiping God are actually not worshiping God because he says, these people, they worship me with their lips, but their hearts are not with me. They said they cast out demons in my name. They perform miracles and wonders in my name. But he says, depart from me. I never knew you. Right. So worship, and 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 because we will call that worship, right, what they're doing. But Jesus said it's not worship in the sense that he's looking for it. So we started out our devotional tonight talking about Matthew 15 and Jesus's parable. That's why the heart is the key thing. The heart, whatever has our hearts and affection, that is the thing we worship, whether or not we bow down in front of it. So yep. it can look different in many different ways, but hey, we leave that up to the Lord. But we're going to actually go through some of what that could look like. So before we get to the union of church and state. Let's show just, um, let me pull up a few things here. If you have any comments uh, and you want to, again, share, you can feel free to, to jump in. If you are online, we welcome your comments there too. So let me, let me just look at some of these things right here. So now let's look at um, some of these things, right? We're going to see here from Amazing Facts Study Guide. You know, so I'll, one I'll, is, I'll how does he exercise power? The United States will become a persecuting power that will force people against their conscience, as did Paper Rome, which is portrayed in the first half of the chapter. So that's one way in which he's exercising the power of the beast. And again, that's why, why I mentioned when we spoke on the seven churches, when we spoke on the seven seas and so forth, we realized this was the way in which the papacy exercised its power over people. Then it says he causes the earth, those who dwell in it, to worship the first beast. Now, how can this happen? The U.S. can lead the nations of the world in forcing allegiance to the papal antichrist. Okay. And again, worship is happening in many different ways. One of the big ways also is spiritualism. When we look at uh, many things that are done in this nation, we see a lot of spiritualistic influences. So every soul on earth will finally worship one or the other. Satan's approach will appear to be deep spirituality. And we're finding that, by the way, a lot of people now are into, we are worshiping the universe, pantheistic views, uh, meditation in, you know, in not necessarily the biblical way, because the Bible does speak of meditation as well. But now you have a lot of business successful people that they all are saying, you know, we're spiritual, but we're not religious, right? So, but again, when you look at and examine the spiritual practices, it tends to predominantly be in the sense of spiritualism. Right. In the sense of they are connecting with beings or stuff. People have these crystals that they worship. There's this called Reiki, you know, and all of these different type of 
um, mystical and Eastern um, thing that people do. And everybody calls it worship. Remember, even in the before the days of the kings, it, it says in Judges, every man did that which was right in their own eye. In other words, they worship according to the dictates of their own conscience. Does that sound familiar? Here we worship the, in, according to the dictates of our conscience. And we are praising God for that, isn't it so? But everybody's conscience is not the same. That's true. And some people's conscience, they worship according to dictates of their conscience, and it's nothing but evil and sin continually. Like in Genesis 6, the earth was filled with violence, and all they knew was to do evil. And hence, God had to send destruction. So that's part of it. That's part of what sets it. So while we do value that freedom, it comes with a price because everybody wants to be free to do what is right in their eyes. And that's the world we live in. Pluralistic society where everyone's truth is their truth. It's your way, my way, but there's no the truth. There is my truth versus your truth. And so therefore, when you have this type of um, approach, at some point it's going to come into a clash. Even today, I think I saw uh, an article or something uh, that came up when you open your, your, your email. It goes into something to the effect that, you know, about why is it the one law seems to be the Christian way, right? If we are this very thing we're saying here, if we, when did we become a nation where the, the, the freedom of religion is the Christian religion, right? Are, are we seeing that? So with that now, you get the idea of how that could possibly manifest itself. Whereas we are worshiping in a pluralistic way, doing all manner of things that we believe to be right, but without the spirit of God Almighty, without the scriptures that is the truth, the way, and the light, then all these other manifestations can lead to what? Destruction. There is a way that seems right to a man or woman, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So I've said a few. Let me take a drink there. Anybody else want to comment before we continue? So if anybody want to comment there, help me out so I can take a drink. Yeah, you can take a drink. <laughs> no, I'm thinking about um, the amount of churches, I don't know if anyone's noticed, mm -hmm. the amount of new churches that are being built rapidly, and there's one about five minutes from my house that was built, and if you go past it on a Sunday, the parking lot is full, they have a huge parking lot, it's full, and they all have different names, they all come up with their own names, they don't say Catholic, they don't say Protestant or whatever, but lots of people are gravitating to these places or to these churches. And they all have their own original names. Yeah. So. And you know, with that there, you're looking at um, in the, even last night, actually, uh, when we were having our business meeting, to me, it was totally off. <laughs> you know, it, it didn't even make sense, but it came up where, yeah, that's very thing. Some were saying, you know, why should we even build a church or make a church because Nobody wants to be affiliated with any denomination today. And that is a true thing. We've preached about that before when we wow. in our sermon. Again, I'm spiritual but not religious. Like that's a known fact. And so in Christianity alone itself has so mm -hmm. many different, you know, mm -hmm. facts, right? But it is true. Uh, many Westerners, they're not trying to be labeled by and when we say label, you have to have a label, but what we're saying what? is traditional denominationalism. They don't want to be Baptist. They don't want to be um, uh, Adventist. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be whatever you, you know, those popular name, Methodist, Anglican, and all of these stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So here on the CIA's website, we have uh, uh, the religions of the world, right? So we have, here we have Baha'i, right? I don't see that much on this side. When I was in the Caribbean, that was a, that was a big thing there as well. You have uh, Buddhism, right? Right? But again, we know all of these. Are they worshiping the same? We have Christianity. Well, in that alone, there's so many different denominations, right? So, but generally, when we say Christianity, we generally mean Protestantism in all of its form. Then you have Catholicism, which some say is not Christianity, but at the same time, it, it is. So Christianity and Catholicism, but then you have Jehovah Witnesses, Mormons, Orthodox Christian. I mean, you have so many different 
type Greek Orthodox, Russian Orthodox. I mean, the list goes on and on. Then we're looking at Hindus, right? That's a religion too. And think of how many millions of people are that. So Vanessa, when you see this kind of worship, again, it could be, it could probably be manifested in just worship anyhow you please, right? So all of these different religions, because think about it, Christianity generally have, I think, one to two billion people, right? Islam has, I think, is one of this, I don't know how current this is, but I know Islam also has over a billion people. Now they are about what, seven, eight billion people on the face of the planet? So you're looking at half of them are in different religions, right? I think um, Islam and Christianity are the two largest, but then, how many untold millions are also in these other ones combined? So let's just say at least possibly 3 billion people on the earth espouse to a particular religion, not the ones who say they're spiritual. Then you have those on the fringes, right, who are just into spiritual practices or atheism, or mm -hmm. they're just bona fide secularists, right? They want absolutely, you know, they, they're, not, they're not concerned anything about anything that is necessarily godly. So when you put all of those into all these different things, you will find that there are, <laughs> that people are worshiping. They're just wor not worshiping in Christianity as we know, because we generally look at um, the, the Christian practices, right? But what about all these other ones here? Right? No, even here we talk about syncretic ones, right? So we, right? Even Rastafarianism is listed in the CIA as an actual religion, right? right? The Rasta man got his own way, right? Right? You have voodoo, right? Some of us are familiar uh, uh, with that already, right? We talk about Wicca and other things like that, but then those who are who don't profess anything, we call them agnostics, right? But to me, again, that is a form of religion. Like you see, we look at religion in a negative way. Basically, everybody practices a religion. What is a religion? Religion is a set of practices that we do consistently and generally for spiritual reasons. And so that's why the guy who's or gal who's saying, well, I don't want to be part of any denomination. Well, the fact that there are so many non-denominational churches, that now has become a denomination. Your denomination is non-denominational, right? So anything that you can codify, if every day I wake up and I do certain practices, uh, whether again it is be God or not, whatever practices I consistently do, that becomes my religious practicing because I it's like this, I do it religiously. So there's there is religion again is not simply listed, um, you know, limited to Christianity. Religion is generally what you do, whatever you do in a religious way, consistently over and over and over again. Okay. I think um that's that's basically what we see because um yes we have a lot of churches all over the place but um basically if you look at all these churches who are they really accountable to you know what I mean mm -hmm. it's not like they are ascribing to God or they they account to God it's like you said you know whatever I believe you know what I mean whatever I believe and 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 it's basically somehow a personal thing and within within you there is this thing that you believe it's not you you look you're not you're not outward center and, and center on god so i mean a lot of these spaces that are non-denominational like you said i mean they might be talking christianity but you know uh, somehow they're not um preaching uh scripture just just holy biblical you know what i mean and so so mm -hmm. i mean it, it's kind of it's okay for me to say, you know, I am, I go to a church or whatever, but what does that church preach or, or what does that church believe or who are they accountable to? And I, and I think that's one of the things that we, we look at at many churches, you know, I don't think even think God is sometimes in, in the midst. That's true. I mean, A.W. Toza said it, you know, if, if the Holy Spirit of God was removed from many a so-called church, is 95 at least percent of what they do would just continue as normal. They wouldn't even miss the Holy Ghost. So you're right. I mean, they, they, exactly. but they are doing what? Religious things. Okay. So um, one of the things to keep here, I think. I think the, can I just the, say one extra thing there as well? Yes, ma'am. Um, go ahead. We're, we're living in a kind of world where as long as it makes you feel good, you're gravitating towards it. So yeah. 
if you don't feel hemmed in by thou shalt not, if you don't feel hemmed in by you shouldn't wear, you shouldn't do, you shouldn't whatever, then people are going to be more attracted to that. Yeah. And that's how it's, it's going to play out, I think. Yeah, and I mean, you know, and again, sometimes it takes a situation to happen to unite peoples and the world as well. Because again, sometimes we say, well, how would this play out? But basically, if you think about it, when there is a nat nat natural disaster or major catastrophe, it changes the world or changes a country like, right? We had no conception that p the pandemic would change life as we know it. Every facet of life was touched, including the church, during the pandemic, right? We're still trying to, you know, regain some semblance of normalcy, but I don't think we will ever go back to full normal because there was a major world event that shifted the way we do things and also our worldviews, right? That changed dr uh, drastically during that time. So you never know. It, it takes the right situation. But I know what, when there's natural, nat natural disasters or catastrophes and financial ruin mm -hmm. those are the things where people will do strange things mm. okay so it says here again notice they're going to be what satan's approach will be a pair of spir deeply spiritual but what incredible miracles will be what to deceive remember deception is the key thing so you don't care how he tricks you because he can trick one of the key things also that the devil has done think about it is is convincing the world that there is no god or and on the contrary con uh, trick in the world to believe that there's no devil, there's no heaven or hell. Isn't that a, isn't that a form of deception? So it's lie. He says, even the last days they will believe even a lie. So that will mess with your behavior as well. Then those who refuse to join this movement could be considered divisive, stubborn, radical, unpatriotic. That's a big one for us here, right? So Jesus labeled Protestant America at the end of time as a false prophet, Revelation 19, 20 and 20, verse 10, because it will appear what? This is why the chameleon nature, it will appear spiritual and trustworthy, but it will instead be satanic. How it will manifest itself, a hey, deception is, is what the devil masters, right? That's the way he does it. Now, what else he does? Tell those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast that was that was um, wounded by the sword and live. The U.S. will make an image to the beast by legislating religious practice. And in so many ways, because think about it, again, our nation was founded primarily with religious people and religious underpinnings. Interestingly, in the Constitution, the word God is not mentioned, right? It is not mentioned. Now, we, again, um, put God to it based on the beginning in the preamble, right? All men are created equal, and we have been given these unalienable rights by our creator. But who is the creator? There are many people who will say, we believe the creator to be God because that's the Christian worldview. But there are others who don't see that, okay? So that is something, again, we have to be careful of. But nonetheless, majority of the people were actually from a Christian perspective and background. So many of the laws take on, even today, many of the laws take on a Judeo-Christian bent, even peop, even, peop, even if people rebel against it. And that's where over time too, we find more uh, amendment even to the constitution to make it more pluralistic than simply from a Christian perspective, right? Even marriage, you, you realize that laws pertaining to marriage were actually executed primarily by the church. So the laws of the land that we have surrounding marriage, well, now marriage we know have changed, right? But I'm talking about early on. The outcomes in the court was really, they took the case and the principles and the rulings that happened for many years by the church. They just applied it that way because, again, majority of the leading men in those days, presidents, um, people who started businesses, universities, etc., they were clergymen. The clergy was the high, highest educated person in all societies. So they would be the ones to actually what shape the way the country think about certain things. 
And now we see the pushback. And now we've come so far now that they're throwing all of that away, right? Because again, today now, people who are in the clergy are generally seen on the very bottom. So that, that respect is no longer there. Already? So that's how it can happen. So what can we say? Let God be true and everyone a liar. So let's try to land this here now. So again, Revelation 13 says he will deceive those who dwell on the earth. So one of the ways he's going to get people to worship is not only through force, but through deception, which is even more powerful. All right. So he will deceive those who dwell on the earth by the signs and wonders that was granted on them to do in the presence of the beast. So deception is going to be that tool. You got to trick some people. You're right, because, yes, yeah, some of the folks are not going to go for that. You know, regular people, they'll be like, listen, you're not forcing me to go to no church. Ain't no way. <laughs> but with the right deception, they will do so. So again, when there is national conflict, turmoils, we see that societies change. When the stock market um, changes, when there are riots, think about it. In the past, let's say, three to five years, okay, in the last three to five years, how many laws have changed just by because we have been protesting? A lot has changed. When we talk about reform, even in the in the police department, when we talk about reform in different things, it is because of societal uproar as well. So it always takes the people to rise up to throw off the yoke of oppressive government and corrupt government. But nonetheless, the economy is the biggest telltale. And there is a quotation, again, you know, I know some folks may not always subscribe to that, but I think that this bears truth, right? There's a quotation that says, where national apostasy will be followed by national rule. What does it mean? It means the more, when the morality of a nation or any country or anywhere gets to be so high or so evil, then national ruin follows or economic crisis. How does that play out in the Bible? Let's look at it. In the Bible, you will find God punishing his people not without fault. He always generally brings judgment at some point. The Lord is long suffering. The Lord is merciful. But it says he will not always chat with men. He will not always tolerate evil. And at some point, God has to put his foot down. But if you think about it, when you think of the Bible speaking of famine, are you aware that every famine in the Bible is you are looking at a financial crisis? Every famine in the Bible is related to a financial crisis, right? Because, okay, we start with Joseph's situation, right? That's one of the easiest ones. But there, people had to go to Egypt to do what? To buy grain. And then the money ran out. And then they sold their real estate property, their land. It says Joseph bought it up all. What is that? That's money. Those who have money in times of crisis will do better than those who do that. And that's why we find this financial language used here to coerce people. You cannot buy or sell except you take the mark of the beast. That's why there must also be of necessity an economic situation to bring this about. I'm telling you, we do not know how far we will stoop until there is a major crisis in our life. That's why we should never say, I will never do that because many of us have never had the opportunity or were put in a situation to do that. You think of Egypt, I mean, Israel again. These people were, some of them were eating their babies. What sane person will do that? This is, this is the people of God, not the pagans. The famine was so great, they want to eat their own kids. Then it says some of them were eating animal dung because the famine got so bad and nothing is there to eat, they were willing to eat even the feces of animals. This is in the Bible, family. This is in the Bible. But aren't people doing that even today, though, in some of these places where it's war-torn? You know, yes, ma'am. You, you hear stories of what people are having to resort to do. They are. And, but not only that, right here in America, in the Great Depression, if you read some of the stories, people were eating the, 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 the shoe leather off, off the bottom of their shoes. Those are all stories there. I'm telling you, when things get rough, 
and you don't know what you will resort to. So when things get rough, in order for people not to go down some of these routes, they will be glad, they will glad to do whatever probably a government or nation tells them to do. Okay? So again, we leave that up to the Lord. I just pray, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Okay, we've already looked at this here. So this merging must also take place to core. So now it's another way this it will come. It's not only the church can make this possible, and it's not only the state that can make it possible. It must be married together. So church and state must unite in order to bring about this. So one needs the other, right? In order to bring the Christians along, we will need the Christian people to say that it is all right. In order to punish then the church can't do that because we've gone long past that now. We need what? We need the state, the power of the state that bears the ammunition to be able to bring about the punishment. So that marriage must come. And that's why you hear over and over again, always church and state, the separation of church and state. That is always a contention here in America. Why? Because you have to hem and haw against this thing for it to finally be inseparable. Okay. So, what will bring about this union? Again, the sins have reached unto heaven, Revelation 18, right? The, the luxury, the natural disasters, you see, notice this. This is all under the outpouring of the latter rain right here. So what? when all of this is happening, the power of the Holy Spirit, verses 1 through 5, will, have already, will also be probably maybe at the same time or just before. God's people will be filled with the Holy Spirit, and we call that the loud cry. That's like the final thrust, okay? So the earth indeed will be on a sharp decline um, at this moment. Then it says God's judgment begin to fall on the land, and her riches come to what? Nothing. That's why now people are willing to do it. Listen, listen, we got to get back to God. And it has happened so many times. It really has happened so many times. I'm doing some writing right now, but part of it is, is going back to where we write some of the history of previous events and reading through these things. And I'm like, wow, I've never even seen this before. But there were times indeed when people gave up so much of their rights in order to get, you know, financial favor or blessings. And we all, everybody want to go back to God, go back to God. When you think about it, the great religious awakening, the, 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 the second great revival, right? And you talk about, um, 9 11. I mean, all of these things drove people to spiritual spirituality or, or the church, right? Everybody want God when there is what crisis. Look at that young man, and we, you know, um, uh, we don't want to trivialize that. But the young man that recently collapsed on the on the field, right? That was an emergency. But notice, people who would not normally pray in the praying. Look at this. You will never find the NFL kneeling down to pray. But in a moment of crisis. You see the whole, everything stop and millionaires who probably never pray in their life, everybody was what? Praying. Why? Because it need a catalyst. So there must be a catalyst to bring all of this about. And those are some of the ways we can't say for certain, but we know that those are some of the ways. But again, natural disasters must be there. Evil must be at an all time high because in the Bible you will find this term. The sin, uh, the sin has not yet reach up to heaven. In other words, that's still probationary time. In, in other words, God is saying, I'm still having mercy because, but notice that other times when he says, give her double for her sins. Not only that, but the sins of this nation have come up to heaven and now God sent Israel to go and wipe them out. So sin and evil that is rampant in our world will bring about these things. Then we also have calamities that are happening. By the way, that's another thing. Search online for the financial cost of natural disasters. And you will find these two, whenever there's a natural disaster, it costs millions, hundreds of millions of dollars for nations. Okay, The California wildfires, and some of them go up also to billions. So you want to calculate that as well. That's unplanned money that the, what, the nation never you know, have, have accounted for. So now there's a financial crisis or there's a disaster and we got to find money that we already don't have. But it's it still happening people. as a result of the COVID as well, because if you notice the shelves in the stores were bare, there are very few things on some of the shelves. And then also if you have the service done, it takes longer to get it done because they're short right. of the manpower to get it done. Or, right. you know, the parts for, look at the cars, how one minute the car 
car lots were full of brand new cars. And then the next minute, they hardly had any cars to sell. So right. it and had gas a huge prices. knock on effect. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it's still happening. Baby formula, just that they were having issues with, with baby formula as well. You know, so I'm saying these are things that can create wow. uh, situations when uh, people are looking for. So when so many of those things happen, it creates a an environment now where people will cry out for solution, almost anything. And so that's why we say you will never know the person who don't want God. Trust me, when there's a situation, everybody cries out, God. OK, so the same God they curse on one breath is the same God they will be seeking when things are not going well. So I think we got the point here. Um, so let's, I wanna end with what revival will look like, right? Because false revival will take place. We call it the false prophet, right? So again, Jesus is clear. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, right? It's not simply what you say with your mouth, but it says the one who does the will of my father in heaven, that's the one who will enter into the kingdom. Many will say to me, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not cast out demons in your name? Have we not done many? Now think about this too. What about Elder Reed was onto something there earlier too, right? Many of these churches, what is their emphasis? The charismatic manifestations of the spirit. The majority of these churches, especially in the a lot of non-denominational churches, and of course not every church, but a lot of them, it is simply all about the miraculous and the sensational. And so that's what we're saying. The devil performs miracles too. We're not against all miracles. Of course, we test the difference, but the devil, a miracle by itself is not a sign that God is with you. Uh, Matthew 7, 21 to 23 continues. And then I will declare to them, I never even knew you. Depart from me because you are practicing what? Lawlessness, meaning there was one thing with the mouth, but their heart again was something else. Right? So we have to have evidence of obedience in our life. Our words and practice should match up. To the law and to the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, is because there is absolutely no what? Light in them. So you and I must be the light in this dark world. As the world gets darker, Christians should be shining brighter because the darker a room, even the littlest of light can make a big difference. So we must now begin to let our light so shine. And we have the light of truth. We have the light of the gospel. And God says we ourselves are lights. We reflect the greater light. And so I pray that we will take this mandate seriously because if we know situations, then we can always share. Remember, Mark Finley says, it is our job to simply share, invite all, but force none. We don't force people. We don't make people convert. We don't do that stuff, right? Some, some religions do, but we do not. All our job is to simply live it out. It, we don't have to also say it all the time either. We, our primary job is to live it out. Let people see it by my lifestyle. But also, as you have opportunity now, we must also speak it. So we must declare with our mouths and demonstrate with our actions. And lastly, Sometimes we ourselves can be in darkness, but we always want to keep in mind that God has given us a solution. Second Chronicles 7, 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, that's our job, and turn also from their wicked ways, then God promises that he will hear from heaven, forgive our sins, and heal our land, not just our own selves, but our land. And that's one of the things that we struggle with because many of us just simply want the land to be healed and we pray for the land to heal, but it's a formula right here. <laughs> if the nation and the people are not willing to humble themselves, if the nation and the people are not willing to pray, if the nation and the people are not willing to seek their God, then how do we expect him to hear, forgive, and heal? So again, we cannot just want the outcome. We must also be willing to put in what is required because this is a conditional promise. It is conditioned upon obedience. So in order for me to get the forgiveness, the healing, and the hearing, I must be also doing the humbling, the praying, and the seeking. Those are my three, and these are God's word. How many he has there? I will, or I got to do four, turn from my wicked ways. So he does three. I hear, he hears from heaven, he forgives, and he heals. Praise the Lord. Is that hard? No, but the human heart that is so proud will not humble itself to actually even seek God. Can you imagine? So I pray that you and I, when we intercede for the nation and we intercede for the people and our friends, we'll also pray that the Spirit of the Lord will help them to turn from their wicked ways also. So 
That's where revival begins. We don't want the counterfeit. We want the genuine and the genuine comes from God through his word and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Eternal Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, that you have given us advance notice. You have given us an opportunity to be able to see what is coming upon the earth. Again, we pray that first of all, Lord, we will make our call in an election show, Lord, because you have given us what is required in order to be saved. And I pray that, Lord, that again, we will not be fearful of these things because there is no need to be fearful. You have already shown us, Lord, that once we are secured in you, Lord, these events, O oh Lord, will not cause the child of God to be lost. These are the things that happens to the world. We also pray there, Lord, that seeing that you have opened our eyes to this reality, may we not be part of those who cause others to be lost and deceived. May we not be part of those who lead others into worshiping the beast. And I pray, God, that you will help us and give us wisdom, discernment, and tact as we must live in this world, as we must live in this nation that we believe here is prophesied about. Because indeed, Lord, we don't, while we know that persecution will come, we don't want to be reckless, careless, and bring it on on our own selves or others before the time. I pray that while we have time, Lord, while it is still a bit um, off in the sense of we're not putting off your coming, but in the sense of we don't know the day or the hour. Help us to prudently, skillfully, and, and swiftly occupy until you come. Let us not become idle. Let us not become uh, ones who want to retreat from the battle. But let us remain as, as light and salt in this earth. Until you come, you said to occupy. Help us. Give us endurance also to do it. Let us not lose heart nor lose hope. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. 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 Already. Well, thank you all for joining us this evening. We will continue next week with chapter number 14.